as I dive into our lesson tonight, you know, uh, I want you to think about this question is, have you ever felt stressed and full of anxiety during the holiday season? Have you ever felt stressed and full of anxiety during the holiday season? You know, I found a, a, a stat, a, a poll that came out in December of 2022 this year by the American Psychiatric Association, which is the oldest psychiatric association uh, in the U.S., but it says it, it came out with this poll that nearly a third of all Americans feel stressed out in the holiday season. Do you feel stressed out in the holiday season? I know as Thanksgiving, usually from Thanksgiving to January, it, it can be a really stressful time for everyone because we're, you know, we're, we're trying to have a great Thanksgiving, getting ready for Christmas. We're closing out the year. We're ending, you know, reports all having to be turned in. You're wrapping things up at your job, but then you're getting ready for Christmas. You're, you're doing all kinds of things, right? And, and the whole idea of December, the month of December is we know what the reason for the season is, right? It's, it's the, to prepare us for the coming of Jesus, the birth of Jesus, because he is our peace, right? He, is our the one that we worship and you know tonight i want to kind of do a lesson about that and how to kind of navigate the holiday season and to try to keep us focused on jesus and and have peace because he is our peace but in the midst of all the the what's happening in the world and a lot of good things that are going on in our church right now the, it can be a pretty stressful time uh, i know i'm feeling a lot of stress kind of getting ready for the new year you know making sure our calendar set all of our leadership is 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 taking care of all the details that we need to take care of to prepare us for the next year and i appreciate robert and michelle's leadership the, our elders leadership to kind of always center us and slow us down so that we can do great and focus on what really matters, which is Jesus, amen, throughout this time. And so tonight, in the midst of all the things that are going on in our holiday season, right, uh, my lesson is entitled Finding Peace in Christmas. And, I, and it, it's, 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 it's about learning to, be, to have peace in stressful times and in chaotic times. If you just look at what's going on in the world, man, our world is divided. Our world is polarized. And there's so many issues that that disciples have to and, and our family members are going through and and listening to and being bombarded by Satan's on the attack. There's all kinds of things happening in our world that it's easy to 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 be caught up and feel anxious and stressed out all the time. Now, think of that stat, though, by the American psychiatric. Nearly a third of all Americans say that during the holiday season, it's a time of great stress. And I hope this year it could be a time of great calmness and a time of really being close to God and, and being inspired and getting ready for the new year, getting ready for Jesus's birth and what that means and the kind of impact he had, but also the vision for our lives, what kind of lives that we can live that make a difference in this world. And so tonight, my lessons kind of, it's not really a deep lesson. It's more like kind of practicals. Uh, I came up with about eight ways to let lessen the stress in our lives, where we have wellness instead of stress that's happening. And so let's dive right in. Okay. It says in Proverbs chapter four and verse 26 in the NIV, it says, give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. One of the first ways I think we can find peace in our lives is it's okay to say no. You're for the next couple of weeks, right? We're going to be having midweek service. There'll be parties going on. There's going to be, you know, a Christmas service coming up. Then after that, I mean, uh, um, not a Christmas service, but a Christmas Eve service on Saturday at 5 p.m. Everybody's going to be getting ready for that. You're, you're going to be having dinners. You'll be having family engagements. Some of you are going to be going out, out of town, right, to spend Christmas with family, friends. We're going to be celebrating, trying to have a great time in the midst of all those things. A lot of times during the holiday season, there's a lot of expectations out of us that we have on each other uh, and, and that people have on us. And so one of the first ways we could find peace in our life is to learn how to say that it's okay to say no to certain things. Like if there's things that that is not going to bring you joy and calmness uh, in the midst of the holiday season, you might want to say no to it. You know, and I've been thinking about this a lot because it's a huge deal. I, I know I feel stressed a lot. 
you know, the other week, uh, the, my my ki- during the fall season, it's kind of chaotic for the Kiana Ohana because my, you know, Ku's birthday is in September. Kalais is in November, Nani's in December, then Thanksgiving is going on. We visited my, I mean, all this stuff happening. And there's all these pressures that are going to be put on us. Look, look at these five stressors. There's five stressors here that all of us may be experiencing at different times in our life. Family and social pressures. Do you, do you, do you feel that? That there's different pressures put on us, unreasonable expectations. You know, you might be hosting a party and you might get all frantic like Martha, right? Instead of being like Mary and, and all those things are important to do, but, but not if it gets us so frantic where we lose our faith and lose the peace that Jesus and God want us to have, especially during this season uh, of Christmas, unreasonable expectations dietary concerns if 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 you've been if you've been doing really great and losing weight or being on top of your health and and watching what you eat oh my gosh the holiday season could be the worst time for it right learning how to you're going to have to choose you're going to have to say no to this or no to the 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 delicious jerk chicken that stacy makes and all kinds of different things sometimes the kingdom of god is the worst place to lose weight man because we always love to eat and spend time or, or do a paella or things like that but we have dietary concerns maintaining diet exercise and sleep routines it's hard to do all these things. And then and when we're when we're running frantic and losing our way, man, it's it's so easy to just lose focus. It's also a time for many of us where we feel sad or we feel lonely, or perhaps even going through loss right now. And these are just some of the stressors that many of us are are feeling, or if not feeling now, we might be feeling it as we get closer to Christmas and the new year, New Year's Eve parties, New Year parties, all those types of things. So remember, as, as we go through life over the next couple of weeks, you know, remember that one way to lessen stress and anxiety in our lives and find peace is that it's okay to say no to certain things and say yes to other things. You can't do it all, right? It's very difficult to do. And the, the second thing is in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. (laughs) What a great scripture in the New Living Translation. And a second way to lessen stress and anxiety in our own personal lives is to manage conflict well, is to learn to manage conflict well. You know how it is when we're around family. We all love our families. We all, if you're visiting family, if you have in-laws coming in and you're hosting some parties, uh, I do want to say, let's be vigilant, you know, uh, about COVID-19, about uh, the RSV as well as the flu virus. You know, let's be vigilant about be mindful that that is still happening in our world and that we can contract, we can get it. We can pass it to others. Let's be safe during this time. Be aware uh, as we gather, let's take precautions. For those of you who have health challenges, please definitely be safe, take precautions. Uh, But with that said, you know, as, as you're around a lot of people uh, spending great family time, getting rejuvenated for the new year, there's conflict that can happen in our families. I know, you know, both my girls are going to be coming home. You know, this whole year, pretty much, it's been just Grace, Ku, and myself in our house. When before we used to have five. Kalei's off in her third year at Pepperdine. Nani's in her first year dorming at Cal State Long Beach. And so there's only three of us. And although the house has been a little more quiet, you know, we always look forward to them coming out. And then we have you know, we have, we have people coming over like that with the friends and family, but all this kind of stuff, we're going to be experiencing all that. There's conflict that can happen in all of our relationships. So one thing to consider to lessen stress and anxiety during this time is to manage conflict. Well, instead of trying to just dive into everything and trying to resolve everything right now, perhaps we need to learn to listen and, and learn about what the other person's saying and seek to understand and, and just take this time to manage that conflict well. Maybe we have to deal with certain things now, but maybe we have to put it off to another time so that we can experience a life of peace during this holiday season. Amen? Conflict is something that's always going to happen. It's inevitable, right? If you're in relationship with people at some point in time, there will be conflicts. You might be experiencing conflicts now. 
that different parties are going to be going on. And then there's some that you go to, some you might not, and there might be a conflict there, or birthday party, midweeks, all this stuff coming up. So learn to manage conflict well. And if you need help on it, call somebody, get some input on it. That's always a great thing to do. So remember, it's okay to say no. It's also great to manage conflict well. In Proverbs 14 and verse 30 in the New Living, it says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Another great passage. The third thing is just take a breath. If things get so overwhelming, take a breath. You know, Robert does all these kinds of classes on and breathing exercises that that are that I, Grace and I was part of a learning lab one time where we were just working on our breathing exercises that when life gets overwhelming, one thing you can do to lessen stress and anxiety is breathe, is slow down your breathing and just take a breath. Try that with me right now. Like breathe in. Breathe out and exhale. And when life gets so overwhelming, <laughs> take a breath. It's amazing what a breath can do, you know, for our state of mind where we can experience peace, you know, like uh, inner peace, right? <laughs> Kung Fu Panda, inner peace. And, you know, take a breath. If everything gets so overwhelming, slow everything down, take a breath, and we can experience peace in the midst of that overwhelming situation right there. It And it's something you know, everybody has to breathe every day, right? Something you have to do. So in the midst of your day, consider slowing your breath down, taking different kinds of breathing exercises so that an overwhelming situation, you can experience peace. That's a great way to do it. The fourth thing uh, is the courage to rest, you know, schedule time to rest. And what I love about this point is in the midst of the everything going on in our lives, especially during this time, be mindful of resting, that your body's going to need time to, you know, to work, to play, to be involved in church activities, sports activities, all kinds of things, church activities. But, the, but it takes courage to just slow down for a minute, take some time off. Uh, take some R and R and just get maybe a day or so or an hour, or two hours of rest. And it takes courage to do that. That you know, God is in the midst working. The Spirit is ahead of us working. We don't have to be involved in all these situations. We don't have to just be on the go, 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 go. But our body needs rest. We need rest. So have the courage to just you know schedule time to rest. You know, one of the things that that I know Grace loves to do is at, at, in the beginning of every year. Turning Point has usually like a women's retreat that for their ministry and many for the last couple of years, the Metro ladies were going to that and spending time over there in their retreat. They have a specific time during the retreat, right? For many of us who grew up in the ICOC tradition, we know that going to retreats, there's a lot of work going on at it. Even though it's called a retreat, we're working at it, right? And during their women's ministry uh, retreat, they just have a segment. A, a actual segment where they just rest for a complete hour. Uh, in teen camp, they, we figured out that oh, after a couple of days, sometimes things are getting so stressful for the kids and they're having some meltdowns there that there's time during the day where they can have a period of time of just resting and slowing down and doing nothing. During this holiday season, schedule some time to rest in, some, something that will give you rest and give you some R&R &R so that uh, you can get rejuvenated, find peace, and continually, continually do awesome during that time. It's called actually the Mothers and Ministry Retreat. Uh, so if you're ever interested in that, definitely talk to Grace. Some of the ladies here, they always go. But we figured out that, hey, everybody needs rest at these retreats and how much more in the midst of everyday life, somewhere along the line, if we could schedule a time of rest in our daily lives, that would be awesome, right? But every couple of days or so, every on a weekly basis, there should be time where we're scheduling that, where we can slow down, get recharged. Uh, I love this, this quote here, the courage to rest, why slowing down can be the bravest decision you ever make. Awesome. Schedule that time. In Proverbs 30, verse 8, it says, Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Give me only my daily bread. Here's another thing that we can do. 
is is this the 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 proverb here is about wisdom and just just give me my daily bread. There's just what I'm what I'm great get whatever I get I can be grateful for and in the moment. And we we've heard different speakers throughout this last year just talk about gratitude, how important it is to have gratitude in our life because it's a choice that we make. You know, gratitude must be cultivated. It doesn't just happen, right? Like, you know, faith, you got to build faith. It doesn't just happen. You must, you must take some time to have some work on it, have some action in it and, and focus on the things that we have in our lives that we're grateful for. Well, what is your top five? That's the question I have for you tonight is what's your top five in terms of the things that you're grateful for right now? Remember, we just did a Thanksgiving quiet time series. We had a, we had a, a, re, a, a spiritual workshop at the beginning of the year. We did a, we had a re, uh, meditations about what we're grateful for, right? Well, here's my five that I've been just thinking about reflecting on is this year is 30 years as a Christian for me. I've been a Christian for three decades. And, you know, back when I was a, a younger Christian, man, my friends and my family would be like, oh, this is just a fad for each, you know, <laughs> 30 years later, I'm still doing it. You know, I've been in the ministry for 29 years, and I'm grateful for that because I've been on a wild, amazing, amazing journey. The family that I have, the wife that I have, the family that I have, the career that I have in the ministry has been such an amazing ride. The uh, It's been so awesome just to be a disciple and have purpose in my life. I'm also grateful for Grace and my family and to see how God has really moved in her family this past. I mean, it's been happening for years, but especially this year to see our families reconnect, to be connected to one another for the first time, you know, through a through a, a situation with Nani soccer has just been such a it's just been mind blowing to see that happen. And who would have thought in our lives that both of our families would have been able to come together through a soccer event, you know, not even where we're at, you know, it's in the state of Hawaii. And, and, and my daughter was a part of that. And wow, it's such a great time for her family there. I'm super grateful for God really moving there. And, and we've been in a, we've been a 30 year, you know, prayer time basically on, on, seeing relations improve in our family. The third thing I'm grateful for is our st Metro staff, uh, uh, staff and eldership and deacons and the unity and friendship that we have. You know, that was a prayer of mine years ago, you know, three, four years, four years ago, this was a prayer. I wasn't sure that could happen. And yet I'm so encouraged by our staff, you know, and, and uh, the friendships that we have on staff, the unity that we've had, we've had to work it out though. And it doesn't just like unity is one of those things that takes forever to build, but takes seconds to destroy. Right. And so I am grateful for the Metro staff. And here's a picture of our Los, LA uh, staff Christmas party that happened. The Carrillos were sick that night. They couldn't make it there. The the uh, Sanchez couldn't make it as well. The And the uh, Henleys couldn't make that as well. And but, but others could be there at it. This was our staff. We just had to take a picture at it. It was a great time of fun and fellowship. But it is a it, this picture it gets me emotional because you know we've been through uh, a lot in our region and and but I'm so grateful how God has brought us together as a staff and to see new elders appointed in the year has been awesome. Uh, prayerfully, we'll have another air, elder to, uh, in training. The Simmons be appointed in uh, real soon. Uh, so be praying for that. But that's been such a great journey for us. And I am grateful for it uh, tremendously. Coaching football has been a, has been a godsend for me that it's been something that has kind of been been life giving to me has given me life and encouragement of being able to not only coach my son, but to be amongst about 40 50, 60 teens, basically, where I can influence and spend time with like that. And here's our uh, here's our undefeated football season that we had, undefeated football team and undefeated season that we were able to do it. And, you know, that's hard to do, right? Uh, it's difficult to do it. I'm grateful for all the new relationships that I've made that I've been cultivating uh, to, and be praying to see God move in their lives as well. And so this is our picture of it right after we won, you know, league championship right here. It was such a great time of, of uh, faith building and building new relationships. But I'm grateful for the new relationships that I had. And I didn't know if this was ever going to happen, but it did. And I love doing it. 
uh, as well as the last thing in my personal ministry, I'm really grateful for the Metro teens, you know, and the teen ministry, the teen leaders, the teen parents, and all those who serve in that ministry there. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by all. I'm grateful for the whole church, but specifically for my uh, ministry that I'm personally in right now and in, in personal ministry as the teen ministry, you know, I'm grateful for them. Here's our teen Christmas party that we recently had and had kind of a crazy time together with teens and, and those who, those who graduated have all gone to the campus ministry right now or different parts of other campus ministries. We're super encouraged by them and, and the Esperanto's pulling them in and being encouraging to them and taking them in and getting them to the next stage of life in campus. But our teen, we had a great teen party at my place this past week with with some of the teens and the parents oh my gosh our teens amazing hearts you know these are the presents that we dress them up as gifts right and i appreciate all their hearts to go for it right there obviously the white elephant right Hey, one word on the white elephant, man. Look at look at Michelle in this picture right here. <laughs> the coveted blanket, basically. And, and, and you know, it's Kathy over here, they got their gifts. We had about 20-something gifts all being passed, stolen. Don't lose your faith, man. Don't the, the, the white elephant can cause stress and anxiety in our lives, man. That's what I experienced at this. <laughs> but it was so great to see everybody just have a great time of eating, faith, fellowship, fun, you know, and experience experiencing family uh, together. There's so many things that, that went, look at Dylan, Chick-fil-A, right? You better believe that was being stolen. Uh, but I appreciate his heart in it. Uh, everyone had a great time there. And, and guess what? The gr- special surprise guest, the Grinch showed up at our Christmas party. <laughs> Obviously, we all know who that is, right? Alden Andrade. Andr- Andrade. And uh, he was great, great heart, great spirit. We had a really great time at her. And these are just some of the things I'm grateful for. My question to you is, what's your top five? These are just practicals that can kind of help us to reduce stress and anxiety through the holiday season. But we must be proactive about it. Amen. Because life will get busy. In Proverbs 12, verse 25, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Be kind to others during this time. Amen. You know, there's movements that have been started because people were just kind to one another. This I put this cup of coffee because in Italy, Italy, there was a there was a uh, uh, a man who cre- who who started giving you know buying a cup of coffee, and then when he would get a coffee he would pay for the next one and that and and this store this coffee shop would just the next person who couldn't afford it they would give it to that person and a movement began because of one act of kindness let's remember jesus was kind to people especially during this time because during the holiday season as as much as there's festivities going on and we're having a great time parties are going people are you know going to all kinds of different events like that there's a lot of people who are lonely as well. And that while you and I might be having fun or, you know, and having a great time during the holiday season, there's a, there's a lot of people who go through loss during this time because it's the holiday season kind of is a, is a little tough to deal with because they lost a loved one that this is their first year that they're not spending that time with. And so be mind, let's be mindful of that and be aware of that, that we can be kind to others, you know, lend a hand. And, And again, right. It's like, it's like, like being kind is like having a little bit of faith. You don't need a lot. A little can go a long way. Today, Grace and I were, were having lunch with Ruth Slaughter, you know, to just spend time with Ruth. And it's always a pleasure to spend time with Ruth Slaughter. And she got in line first and she paid for us. And I was, we were almost, we were trying to, I was like, no, I want to pay. I don't want her to pay for us, you know. But anyway, she was so kind to us. She, she got me on that one, you know, to pay for the bill. But uh, the, the guy wouldn't do it. We had a little, you know, went to a Mexican restaurant, El Otro Amigo, and we had some just lunch together, finding out how she's doing and spending some great time with her. It, it, it made my day today. And it's a kind gesture, you know. We were trying to do that to her, but she beat us to the punch and did it for us. And our, our spirits were so encouraged 
just to spend time with Ruth and just a small gesture can go a long way. Like even as you're going about, as you're gift shopping and going about your day, smiling at another person, saying hi to a stranger. We don't have to have, you know, huge faith and start a whole movement or something like that. We can, we can just do small acts of faith that lead to kindness that can make a huge impact. There's an event that is going on in the community outreach this weekend, you know, in, in a boy's home that we can participate. Our fellowship can get involved in that. Jerry's going to be talking about that a little later today. So be just be mindful of it. I know that I know you know this already, just something for us to consider, you know, to be kind to others, especially during this time. Do not assume that just everybody's having a great time because many times there's what's called holiday trauma. Holiday trauma is, is you, you, the holidays can trigger trauma in you or help remind you of trauma because of, of past hurts that happened during the holiday season. And so let's be mindful of that. Be kind to one another. Amen. Uh, this one, Proverbs 20, verse one, wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever's led astray by them is not wise. Drink in moderation. I want to talk about this briefly here because this is an important thing. A lot of times celebrations, you know, while we're all having a great time, people are drinking during that time. And while drinking is not a sin, getting drunk is a sin. And I just want to put it out there and just help our church to be aware that, that during this holiday season, it's okay to have wine. It's okay to have beer. It's okay to drink alcohol, uh, but do it in moderation. Let's remember, let's not be led astray by this. You know, we have a ministry called CR ministry. I could just hear Lexus in the background, whoop, whoop, you know, like that. I can see, hear all of them just put in a word and just, just because this tends to happen at celebrations. And while we want to celebrate, let's be mindful that people may have a past that struggle with alcohol. And let's be mindful of that as a, let's drink in moderation. Amen. Have a great time, but just be paying attention. This can lessen stress in our lives. Remember getting drunk, masking or like trying to drown our problems out in alcohol never solves the solves the problem. It only exacerbates. It only makes more problems. So be, be considerate of this. Be thinking about this. Drink in moderation. The last thing, all the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. And I love this passage because a, a cheerful heart, a heart that is at peace and is just focused on joy has a continual feast, meaning they can they constantly look forward to new things and experiencing great things, you know. And so the last thing that could be great, that could be helpful in reducing stress and anxiety during the holiday season is creating a new tradition. Think of who you're going to be hanging out with over the next couple weeks. You know, if you're having people into your home, obviously, again, be safe, take COVID precautions, you know, and all that, but create a new tradition. What's something that you could do new this year that could, that could, that could, but the issue is it's not so much the event. The issue is doing something together that could bring a lot of joy and encouragement and, and creating new traditions. I know for our family, we, we love to go outside. We, you know, we love to go on a hike. We love to go, we watch movies. We're for sure going to be doing that, you know, and we love to eat, uh, our favorite meals, different traditions that we have there. Remember to possibly consider create a new tradition this holiday season. Amen. Well, what did we in our in our discussion questions tonight? You know, when you go to your Zoom calls tonight, you know, just something to consider is what did you learn tonight that can help you reduce stress and anxiety in the holiday season? Amen. What 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 did you learn tonight? What are one of those eight ways, right? And you go, I forgot what those eight. I'll I'll put them up in a second. Maybe some areas you're doing really great in an area you're not doing. Maybe that's something to talk about tonight. Share it with one another so we have communal learning going on that we all can we all can experience the spirit's involvement and moving in our lives uh, as we share different things we, we're doing good in, some things we're not doing good in. You know, uh, maybe you're 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 good at saying no to certain things, but you're you're not good at conflict, and you're diving into so much conflict during during you know, like it's not when you're having a Christmas meal, it's not time to talk about your marriage right there, right? <laughs> not not right there. There's another time to do that, you know. So maybe we got to look at different things we're doing well in, and sometimes some we're not doing well. We could share that in our D groups tonight. 
So our lesson was called finding peace in the, in the Christmas season. And I hope we can, Jesus is our peace, but there are different ways that we can manage, right? Different ways that we can lessen stress in our lives and anxiety or lives. Well, what are some of them? It's okay to say, no, remember you can't do everything this holiday season. You can't. It's only 24 hours in your day. It's okay to say, no, let's manage conflict. Well, when things get too overwhelming, take a breath, schedule some time to rest, to rejuvenate during the holiday season, schedule some time in, you know, to encourage yourself, self-care, be grateful. What's your top five? Be kind to others, drink in moderation, you know, and then also create a new tradition. Amen. I hope this was encouraging to your faith tonight that we can find peace in the midst of the crazy, chaotic holiday season. Amen. Amen. Because why? Because it's all about Jesus. He's the reason for the season. Thank you so much for your time. You know, I totally appreciate this time together with our family. Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been educational and inspiring for you. If you'd like to know more, please join us by going to study.laicc.net and we'll be happy to contact you and help you in any way we can.